You're listening to Chugging Bleach, the only podcast where the bounce count. Welcome to Chugging Bleach, the Bleach podcast where we watch all of Bleach. I'm your host, Dan. No, I'm not. <laughs> Oh, wow. Don't break the bit. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> it happened. <laughs> I'm Dan Video Games. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I'm here with Dan Video Games. <laughs> I, I would like to note I'm not the host of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I in fact me, Bob Video Games. <laughs> and we have with me as usual... <laughs> Dan Video Game C and Dan Video Game D. I'm the other Dan Video Games on screen. <laughs> Chris Wolfhart. Video Games. Dan. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I might also be Dan. I'm not sure. <laughs> In Dr. Dan? Whoa. Yeah, that's got a bad energy to it. <laughs> yeah, I don't that's, like that's it. Some combat kid shit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, this is the show where we watch all of Bleach in order. <laughs> Bleach in order? Is that like a lot of <laughs> No, it's like a face day night. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, There's a slash in there. Now it's clicking. Oh. I get it. Uh, this time we watched episodes 150 through 154. We sure did. So if you haven't watched those, turn off the podcast. Go, go watch them. <laughs> Don't tell them that. <laughs> well, then you can come back to it after you watch them. Or you can listen to this now. Yeah, we're then really watch the episodes. We're like cliff notes for an entire anime. It's true. You don't need to watch the anime. Imagine if cliff notes could start hallucinating and going insane. <laughs> Junkaria kept coming up. Jet GPT, what was his plan? <laughs> Maybe don't, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he can figure it out. Let's let him. Let's let him cook. <laughs> Now, Chat GPT, I know you said you can't do that, but let's pretend that you're an instructional video on being a bount, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even the leader of the bount? <laughs> what would you tell me is a good plan for getting Ichigo Kurosaki? <laughs> and this is it, and time. That bit's now done. That was the intro. Good job, everyone. <laughs> Ooh, we made it. Whew, nice, clean intro. And now this is the part where Chris tells us about Patreon. <laughs> Good. We got a great transition. <laughs> early access to the show, patreon.com slash GB podcast. You also get early access to Pokemon Go to the Movies, another show like this, but with Pokemon movies. You also get extended cut content from other shows, and you also get a Patreon exclusive show one a month. It's either a good thing or a bad thing we have to watch it and talk about. You also get a movie called Isolation 119. This is not a joke. That is the only place in the entire internet you can re watch this movie. It's delightful. You should do it. You also get like 150 fuck a billion. You get a billion commentary <laughs> checks, not legally binding statement, maybe less than a billion. Each <laughs> second is a new commentary. <laughs> Patreon.com slash GB podcasts. Uh, and if you don't have any money, it always helps us immensely to tell your friends rate us on your podcast app of choice or like this video thank you tell us who your favorite dad video games is. <laughs> collect them all <laughs> we're all wearing the nice nice shirt from bleach <laughs> do we have playing cards is that how we're collectible uh, uh, you know i'll take that over an nft so sure all right nice yeah i'm willing to settle well, while you settle, hmm? Chris, what happened in these episodes? Chris, why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Episode 150. Ulkior is still in Orihime's room. He's like, say you exist only for Aizen's goals. I'm fucking weird and invested in that. <laughs> <laughs> this matters to me a lot. I don't think Aizen cares, but I do. Yeah. As that happens, Ichigo cuts through the wall. And for some reason, I didn't expect there to be like surface tunnels on the other side immediate other side of this wall but i guess there fucking is i think the deal is he's made a complete hole this this whole thing is a hole he made <laughs> i don't think so because there's a like a square pit with a ladder later on in it it's true this this layer is designed to scare tryptophobes <laughs> <laughs> and nell asks why they didn't want to take the three-day walk to the door she's like it's only three days that way Ichi goes like, our dicks are huge, and then <laughs> hits the door. Then he tells Nell to, to fuck off so that she doesn't get marked as a traitor and killed. 
Uh, Nell chases them and is like, eh, the moment Runaganga saw us, we already became traitors and blah, 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 blah. And she fucking goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And, on. and Renji's like, what is she talking about? <laughs> and Chad, who is the only person of the five people here who isn't like a complete dipshit emotionally, is like, oh, she, she wants to come and wants Ichigo's attention. Yeah, Chad's so good. There's a way down with a ladder, which is why I they must have cut into, like, a service tunnel or something. It looks broken off, though. It looks like he cut into that tunnel because the ladder, like, parts are frayed. Nell literally fell down a hole from the end of Silent Hill 2. <laughs> she fell down a hole after we just got out of the filler where she fell down a hole. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ichigo turns around like, oh, she fell down a hole underground. How could that have happened? Bro. <laughs> well, Ichigo wasn't here for the last week. He he checked out. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's got short-term memory problems. Because <laughs> that was like, let's be real, an hour ago. <laughs> right? Ashida's like, oh, it's an air vent. And I'm like, why do they fucking need air vents? Do hollows breathe? I guess. I guess they're still like humans in some way. The two hollow... Runu, uh, not Runuganga, uh, Dodon Chaka and uh, <laughs> Peshe yell if yeah. she's okay, but she doesn't answer. Ichigo just jumps down the hole and Nell's down there just like stewing and shit talking Ichigo. And she's basically acting exactly like a dumb child being difficult to axe. Mm -hmm. So they, they bicker a little bit and Ruki and Renji are like, Ichigo and the child are doing Manzai. Uh, and then the shaft they're in starts to collapse and everybody jumps down the shaft and Dodon Chaka and Peshe land on Ichigo, and then Nell's like, I want to play too, and jumps on the pile, mm -hmm. and then Ichigo throws them off, and the rocks land on him. Uh, he climbs out of the rocks and complains, and everybody's like, get over it, and walks off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ichigo's like, damn, it's really dark, and then Renji's like, I'll use a keto to light the way, <laughs> and uh, he makes like a tiny, tiny little red ball of light, and everyone makes fun of him. <laughs> Rugi's like, that's what you get for trying to show off. And then Ichigo's like, no, it's, it's don't worry. It's, it's great. You're just like that guy who pulled Santa's sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> he really went out of his way for that, L. <laughs> he did. I bought this really cool <laughs> flashlight on Woot.com. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> it cranks for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about how Eisen built the fortress, but he probably didn't build these catacombs they're in. Which I am willing to bet is a thing that they will never come back to or elaborate on ever. Yeah, I yeah. also had that impression. It sure would be neat though, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, that seems like neat world building. The dipshit squad run down a random hallway and find a big door. She just like, well, we got to be covert past this door. This is probably this is this is this is something they obviously added, so they must be active on the other side of the door. Then Ichigo just blows it open. Then there's another door, and then Ichigo smashes that door. This continues until they're in a room with big torches with five different doors. Lots of doors in this dungeon. Yeah. That's how they work. It's, liter it's literally like uh, there are now five paths. There are five of you. And then Jigsaw comes on over the fucking intercom, I guess. <laughs> uh, they all feel some insane spiritual pressure. And Ichigo's like, Nell, you need to stay here cause from here because it's going to be real dangerous. And then Rukia says they should split up. <laughs> Which is like, oh my god, what are we in, Scooby-Doo? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Ichigo, Ichigo says, that's really fucking stupid, and then Rinji jumps in like, you don't understand, Ichigo, everyone from Soul Society is fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we need to respect that. This is like, Ichigo, I need you to not worry about me. He's like, Rukia, I'm worried about me, alright? <laughs> yeah, re reasonably, if all five of these guys are together, they could probably annihilate anything they walk into. <laughs> Eisen could just be walking the halls and get eviscerated. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> we saw we saw how like eight captains jumping him at once went. Yeah, yeah anyone true. but Eisen. <laughs> He's roaming this dungeon crawl like death in early Gauntlet games. <laughs> he just sees Ichigo and shoots him with the eye beams. <laughs> Ichigo doesn't even try to argue because he has figured out that when somebody from Soul Society says, no, we have to do this stupid shit, it's, it's our ideals that it's just pointless to fucking mm -hmm. argue. Then Renji's like, let's do a cheer for good luck, like a fucking retail team before a shift. I really yeah. expected him to pull out like a big black marker and like they all put their hands in and he draws a smiley face on it. I, I also expected that. <laughs> 
they do a big cheer and split up and leave the hollows behind. Nell chases Ichigo because she had fun with Ichigo. In the 10 seconds this takes, Dodon, Chaka, and Pesce get like fucking... <laughs> Like they zone out and don't realize which path she went down. <laughs> right? It's There's... like, so you didn't notice her leave right in front of you. And you also don't remember which door Ichigo went down. Are you okay? Have you taken your medication? Uh, these are like straight hallways too. Right. Come on. This isn't hard. If this was a full 360, like it was like 12 fucking doors in a 360. Right. I might understand, but it's five on one side. <laughs> And I'm not sure how your brain works, but of all the people in that room, the one I would probably remember who went down which door is the one Ichigo went down. We cut to old Kiora and he inner monologues a little bit about Orihime. The iron car that looks like male Kanamori Noitora shows up and is basically just like basically just like a creep. Mm hmm. Ulkior recaps how they caught Orihime, and it is really fucking goofy. Oh yeah, it's like a real, it's like a really long monologue by like a pickup artist explaining how he gaslights women into sleeping with him. Yep. <laughs> then there's the part at the end where he's like, which didn't really work out or make sense, so I ignore that. <laughs> Yeah, and then, and then they try to use it. He's like, and that's why all of Soul Society became Nazis for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, the, the story made no sense. Was yeah, we actually tricked them into doing this. It's like, no, they're just Nazis. <laughs> we cut to Orihime meeting Aizen. It's a flashback, but I feel like the show doesn't make it very obvious that it is, so it's weird. <laughs> well, she's not in the outfit yet. I guess that's our hint. Yeah, yeah I, I know. Was like, it's a flashback to what? 20 minutes ago? I don't have a frame of reference right? on this. It's all been that long. <laughs> he shows her the Hogyoku. He gaslights her a little bit about needing her power, and then we cut to her in the Hueco Mundo clothes. I guess I guess she also has a giant fucking couch in her room. The giant fucking Aizen couch. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's part of the tile set. <laughs> or he may thinks that she knows where the Hogyoku is, and she's like, I'm gonna erase the Hogyoku, which... I don't know if this happens, but I hope she tries to do that on a dude. I really want her to, like, Beerus <laughs> delete a guy. Yeah. I, yeah, I was going to say, with the power of the Hogyoku, couldn't she erase the Bount arc? <laughs> or did she already? <laughs> I, I think it's weird that this is the first time she's like, wait, I can use my power to erase things. And she seems aware of that. It was kind of explained to her. Right. Like, yeah, I guess Eisen I think, explained yeah. to her. I think Eisen explained it to her, too. She's like, she he, she can erase phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So I guess she extrapolated that into, I guess I could erase, like, physical things if I wanted. <laughs> I should delete a human. <laughs> Wait, what? But as she's as she's thinking about this, they show Eisen, like, smirking. So the, even that might be part of his plan. Who knows? I trust that he <laughs> has a plan, though. He hasn't shattered this trust. Not yet. Not yet. Ichigo is running down a hallway and an Aran car's foot appears behind him. The Aran car encyclopedia. Dadan Chaka will reveal all his secrets. He explains mm. that his eyes and stomach are good, and then Gein shoots him with his sword and blasts him away. And then <laughs> and then Gein's like, hmm, maybe I'll do this with a character that matters. <laughs> He's so mean. So, hey, Chris. Yes. Uh, I missed episode uh, 150, but I'll have you know how I wrote down the exact length of the intro recaps for 151 through the rest. So... Episode 151 is a minute and 40 second intro recap. Thank you. <laughs> Ichigo is being watched in the hall by a dude that looks like vaguely Don Quixote-esque. He also watches Nell run up behind Ichigo and she catches him and runs behind him screaming. And Ichigo stops to try and catch her chasing tackle. But she like accelerates to super speed and like <laughs> headbutts the shit out of him and then cries on him. It's good. She's like, we left Bawa Bawa outside because he has to eat sand all day or he dies. <laughs> <laughs> she says the other two are right behind her, but they aren't. And then she starts panicking and Nichigo senses an enemy and is like, oh, thank God there's something to do other than deal with this baby. <laughs> this is important. The iron car is like jumping in the rafters of this hallway, but he slips and then falls. He sounds like fucking strong bad. <laughs> <laughs> I started losing it because I'm like, his design looks Hispanic. And then he starts talking and I'm like, oh my God, he has like a Spanish accent. They're actually putting a Hispanic person in Hueco Mondo. What? <laughs> I never expected this. He talks like this. I freaked out when he showed up because like he, I hate this man. I, I hate him <laughs> so much. What? Oh, yeah. 
because he, his scene, this fight, this is when I dropped Bleach. <laughs> what? <laughs> My first spoil. I, I put a spoiled image in the Discord. I have had to look at this fucker's face on the spine of this manga every time I walk past my shelf and remember. What? But this, this guy's great. He's goofy. No, I can understand why this might make somebody drop bleach. I don't agree, but I see. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the moment. Yeah, okay. Okay. So... Ichigo and Nell are exasperated and he's pissed that they don't care and ramps his comedy shtick up to 10 and he's like, I'm the great Dordoni, number 103 and Ichigo calls him Tortellini and uh, Dordoni only all, only calls Ichigo Nino and Ichigo says three digits is a lot and Nell says, well, I've never fucking heard of one of these guys with three digits. Ichigo says, he seems weak and then Dordoni does like, gets pissed and does like a weird flamenco dance and like they scrap a little bit and this is where i was like this guy reminds me of a fucking freakazoid character <laughs> what <laughs> yeah it's like the dancing and the flamenco theming and that fucking voice okay. are you talking about akimbo or whatever i don't know it's just the something about the voice is extremely <laughs> cartoony <laughs> i mean this dude is cartoony just to the uh, by the way same voice actor as yamamoto <laughs> oh huh he dances some more and hits a wall and makes the ceiling collapse on Ichigo and Ichigo laughs at... Oh, he collapses on him first. Then Ichigo laughs at him. Then rocks fall on Ichigo. Then Nell laughs at him and then rock falls on her. And then Ichigo laughs at her, and but then she falls over and then he runs over to check on her and she was just pretending and mocks him. Yeah, that's the incredible bit. <laughs> it is. It's top shelf. Dordoni tries to res resume banter with Ichigo. But Ichigo is focused on the baby, and Dordoni basically screams, pay, pay attention to me! <laughs> uh, they start to fight, and we cut to Tosin and Gein. Tosin is watching, and Gein calls him a peeper. And Tosin's like, you also came here to peep, you fucker. And uh, Wonderweiss is hanging out in the corner, eating bugs and being fucking tranced out. <laughs> and uh, Tosin apparently basically keeps him as a dog, because he's also pure. And then Tosin's like... They split up and Gein's like, wow, they're fucking stupid. <laughs> so so good fucking idea, Rukia and Renji. Right. Okay. I need to check something here. How is Tosin watching these screens? Uh, spiritual sense, I guess. <laughs> I guess they're like spirit screens. Do you think they have electricity in Hueco Mundo? Look, I'm just saying, what does being blind mean if everything is made of spirit uh. and he can see spirit? Um, I'm pretty sure he's more blind than than being able to see here. No, see, just say that slower and put some bullshit Zen music behind it. We'll sell a million <laughs> copies. <laughs> we cut back to Ichigo, and he got cut by Doroni. Tosin and Gein say they're going through the domain of the Tresifras, Privaran Espada, meaning they used to be Despada, Espada but got demoted for being too weak. Something about the Privaron Espada just made me go, that's when the grocery store slaps an extra Italian-sounding word on the <laughs> pasta to let you know this is the premium shit. <laughs> but it's the reverse. <laughs> Ashida gets to a room and gets attacked by a big yo-yo. I guess he's the official misogynist now because it's some goofy chick in a butterfly outfit. We cut back to uh, Dordoni, and he explains that, yes, these were actually all really strong. And Ichigo's like, Oh, this is fucking bullshit. Why is a goofy guy so strong? And he does some like in unbelievably goofy looking spins ev evading Ichigo. And he's just jumping around and kicking the shit out of each, like literally kicking the shit out of Ichigo. And Ichigo is coping over this. Which is fair. Uh, this, this was it by the moment. This is when I stopped buying bleach. <laughs> <laughs> enough was fucking enough. <laughs> We ended the Seireite arc with Aizen's betrayal. I'm like, yeah, now we're going to do an arc where we go hunt down Aizen. Okay, now we've got the Iran car. Okay, that's pretty cool. And we, we do the little training arc. And then we go to Hueco Mundo and there's fucking the, the Menos and the double Menos and the Vasto Lordes. And now you got the Iran car and the Espada, which are the powerful Iran car. And now we've got like, an, why do we need another set of super powerful random Iran car goons between us and the Aizen fight? I cannot fucking take it. <laughs> because Soul Society had had captain and, captains and lieutenants, so there has to be like a lieutenant equivalent for the Espada. Oh God. I understand having a problem with the structure of it. I was really afraid you were going to be like, I fucking hate Latino Daffy Duck. <laughs> oh no, like th this character is awesome, but he is the fucking, he, he yeah. is tainted. 
<laughs> he is the mark of the beast. <laughs> <laughs> you are absolutely correct on that. That that's for certain. It gave me a a little like. I, you know, I'm, I wish I didn't bring it up so much. It gave me Kingdom Hearts 3 vibes as you're going through all of Organization 13 at the end. I'm like, oh, we're just all of them, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not one man left behind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dordoni's mocking him and says fighting him is like fighting a baby. Ichigo makes some really fucking embarrassing sounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then Dordoni's like, Nin, you'll use your Bankai. And Ichigo's like, I can't use my Bankai on anybody weaker than an Espada. And Ichigo has like a really fucking high opinion of himself here for no reason. Like, are you aware that Grimjow beat the shit out of you twice? <laughs> right? <laughs> and neither time did he actually use his sword. Dordoni does his own release and becomes like a wind bull monster. His release is Whirl Heralda. And he has, like, wind turbines all over him, and he has, like, big wind, like, pillars that seem to be static, and he can throw at you. It's like a wind version of Rinji's Bankai. Wow, yeah. a, a wind power that's cool at all. Uh-huh, what, <laughs> yeah. what's up? Uh, yeah, do we, do we think this dude could clear could clear Jinkari? Because I think he could. Yeah, I think mm, in an yeah. instant. I mean, I think he would do one axe kick and clear Jinkari. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he kicks Ichigo and, like, starts doing teleport kicks on him and owning the shit out of him, and Nels watches and, like, her skull starts to light up as the episode ends. The Arankar Encyclopedia. Gein explains that the Privaron Espada got booted for being too weak. Dordoni shows up and starts coping and says he must have been demoted for political reasons. His, uh, his enemies coalesced against him to force him out. And then Gein says, actually, it's because your fucking face is weird. <laughs> That's really great. And I believe him on this issue. <laughs> Episode 152 has a 2 minute and 25 second intro recap. Oof. Rinji's running down the hall. He senses something evil. It's to Don Shaka and he's chasing Rinji like a monster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says he's got to find Nell because if they don't find Nell and then Rinji tries like what? What happens if we it becomes that bit where nobody can say anything, but there's only two fucking people. Mm -hmm. Ichigo's still getting worked by Dordoni and we get one of those bouncing along the ground being owned shots. You know, it makes a ton of sense to make, take all this damage instead of going Bankai, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a very yeah. smart fight. He gets pounded by one of the big wind pillars. He's just getting pummeled as Dordoni's like, dude, come on, use your fucking Bankai. Ichigo's held up by one of the wind snakes. This, this, It fucking totally must have impaled him in the manga, but this is just kind of holding him off, like by his shoulder. Yeah, it's like holding him in its mouth. Like, here you go, buddy. I'll hold you up. Ichigo refuses to use his Bankai and just blows the snake away with Getsuga. Nell offers moral support, but he keeps getting owned. And Dordoni's like, fucking use your Bankai. And just like keeps stomping on his dick while saying that. He's like, fucking use it, stomp. Fucking use it, stomp. And Ichigo's like, no. I can't use my Bankai. You simply have to stomp my dick come off completely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into this. <laughs> Nell keeps screaming for him to do something. Ichigo uses flash step to sneak attack, but just gets owned again, and Dordoni prepares to shoot a Saro at him. Nell jumps in the way and fucking eats it. Baby is hungry. <laughs> she fucking eats that Saro. Dordoni is fucking flabbergasted, and he makes an incredible face. Yeah, that's fair. That's uh, absolutely terrifying for this tiny child to eat that giant wave of energy. Let me let me pull it out because I got I got a fucking picture of it. It's delightful. <laughs> that's the face he makes when uh yeah she eats it. <laughs> it's a really good face. <laughs> How else do you react? Come on. Then Nell spits part of it back out at him and says, "Don't be mean to Ichigo." And then he shoots her with a bala. He got pr hurt pretty bad by this. Like, his mask got partially blown off, and he's bleeding. Mm -hmm. He tries to finish her off, but Ichigo uses Bankai and cuts him and saves her. And Ichigo's like, I'm sorry I let you get hurt because I took the most bizarre stance in the world for no reason. I think he even says, I realize it's stupid now. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I, I had shown in Protag brain there for a minute. Ichigo has one of those discussions about strength with Dordoni, and he's like, I know you have a hollow mask, so use it, or I'll force you to use it by targeting Nell. And Ichigo's like, all right, I'll do it. Let's go. I'll show it to you for one second. He puts on the mask. Dordoni's like, hell yeah, finally a worthy opponent, and then is instantly fucking defeated. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's like, okay, I'm going to prepare my big attack. Then, like, the slash appears and sees Spurt's blood. And Ichigo's like, I said I'd only show it to you for a second. Then he's like, finally, I can die in peace. And he has, like, the dying inner monologue. But he does not die because Nell is drooling all over him. I'd rather go to hell. <laughs> Nell's drool has a healing. And this isn't a little bit of drool. This is, like, water mouth waterfall drool. Yeah. Uh these were in the previous episodes, but I would like to note here that in these episodes, Nell shows off her tusks a lot more, which are very adorable. <laughs> <laughs> what fine tusks your child has. <laughs> Ichigo calls him Don Panini, and he gets pissed off, and then they reveal that Nell's drool heals people, and he's like, but I don't want to be drooled on. No, I don't want it. Uh, and then he says, Ichigo's real cool and strong, he, but he, he knows eyes and just uses people, But he, and, and he knew that he wasn't strong enough anymore, and he knows that, you know, this is all pointless, but he, he being told that he's cool and strong is really nice, so he still wants to be an Espada. So he grabs a sword and is like, you're an idiot for healing someone you don't know at all, so we're going to keep fighting. And then uh, it's time for the Illustrated Guide to Soul Reapers, not golden. Not golden. Never golden anymore. Yeah, what mm -hmm. the hell? Ukitake, Kyoraku, and Hitsugaya have a mission. Hitsugaya asks, why them? They explain that the other squads are disposed. Kenpachi and Mayuri are psychos who aren't suited for this kind of thing. Soifan only takes secret missions. Komamura hates being seen, and Byakuya is feeding his fish. <laughs> I think this is a good explanation for why that movie happened. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that th this is this is set up for the movie. I think Mayuri has a pretty good thing going on that I never considered before as a person in group projects or an employee. Uh, simply seem deranged enough and they won't <laughs> ask you. <laughs> yeah, it's this thing where it's like, look, I just do what you're told, but seem fucking <laughs> off-putting enough that people hesitate to ask you at all. Yeah, that's a really smart strategy. By the way, episode 153, three minutes and eight second intro recap. Uh, <laughs> impressive. Yeah. Ichigo knocks his sword away and then just runs away carrying Nell. A bunch of new guys with skulls for heads show up in front of Dordoni. They're like the Arncar version of the Stealth Force? Yes. Like, that. that's what they are. Yeah. So presumably they're all joppers. <laughs> presumably. Yeah. <laughs> Dordoni fights them so Ichigo can escape. He has an inner monologue about how Ichigo didn't need the mask to beat him at all. And that Ichigo lowered his long-term strength to preserve Dordoni's dignity. And how... And then he has, like, a really standard shonen meathead stuff. He's like... Ichigo, Nino, you must learn to kill anyone with no hesitation and have no heart and blah, 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 blah. blah. You have to leave your chocolate sweetness behind. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you must throw away your sweetness like a churro, Nino. And then goes fucking on and on and on and on. And, uh, and he's dead. All the jobbers killed him. Yep. We cut to Chad and he's fighting fucking Disco Kid from Punch-Out! Wii. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Only for like five seconds. Yeah, it's yeah, only for a, like five seconds. It's a weird cut because we, I think, didn't we see Chad like land on his hand in a different episode and that's all we saw? It's so weird. The way they cut this fight into these episodes is really strange. Yeah, all these episodes have some weird cuts in them like this. Ashida is fighting the butterfly girl and again, we only get like five seconds. Aizen gets a report and thinks about how Ichigo should be stronger than that. He then asks, who sent the uh, x keys? I didn't. Exekis? I didn't write down their name, but yeah, the Cell Squad people. Yeah, he, he sent the fake Cell. Who's who sent our? Ex Let's just say Execution Squad because that's what they're called. He asks who sent the Execution Squad after Ichigo, and the, and the little random jobber won't answer. So Eisen crushes him a little with spiritual pressure. Then the pink-haired glasses Espada enters and says it was me, and his name is uh Zayela Poro. Yeah, Zayela Poro. <laughs> he immediately grovels and begs for forgiveness, and luckily. Aizen is just constantly fucking stoned during this whole arc <laughs> and isn't in the mood to punish him. <laughs> like, this scene really read to me. Like, this guy is trying to be Aizen. So Aizen is sitting on his throne watching this weird little pink twink try to Aizen him and is amused by it. Yeah, that's really how it comes off. And Aizen's like, uh, that, that, yeah, it, I'm not going to punish you. By the way, I know every single thing you're doing that you think you, that you think I don't know about. Uh, <laughs> I hope you got some good data for all that shit you thought I didn't know about. And then, and then he kind of slinks off. He's like, "Fuck! How did he know? God damn it! <laughs> it was the perfect plan." And then Gein's like, "Are you having fun?" And Eisen's like, "Do I seem like I'm having fun? I guess I am having fun." 
Ashid is fighting in a big room full of pillars with the girl attacks him with her weird whip yo-yo. And then we cut away from that again. Which I, I gotta say real quick, it's really unfair of them to counterpick Uryu with the Dami Mommy. Like, I really think that's <laughs> fucked up. That is an absolute counterpick. I'm not a fan. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> He's just not ready for this. <laughs> it, it, it's weird. It's weird because he fought a similar character in the Bound Arc, but they, we're way too far into canon shit for them to be stealing from, from the Bound Arc to have been stealing from this. So it feels like it either fed back into it or I don't fucking know. Yeah, I have no idea anymore. The Don Chaka is running down the hall holding Renji like above his head <laughs> and then just pile drives him into the floor. And then he literally goes, wait a minute, why did you do that? <laughs> do that? <laughs> and then Renji's like, why the fuck would I know? And just starts <laughs> kicking him. <laughs> Yeah, d d d <laughs> this team of hollows they picked up is the best part of this whole arc. Yes. <laughs> and Dadon Chaka says, Where, where's Pesce? And Renji's like, Pesce was never here. And then Dadon Chaka's like, what do you mean that Pesce, the person I've known all this whole time, was just an illusion I was making up? <laughs> he's like, no, no, I mean, I mean, he's not here. And then Renji, like, gets so, exasperated. So about Dadon Chaka and Pesce maybe didn't take their medication, <laughs> right? <laughs> he's like yeah this person isn't here right now and he's like my entire life is a lie <laughs> no I meant they're not here with us uh, we cut back to Ishida the girl gloats that he can't run but he uses the Quincy flash step and shoots at her and she blocks it and it's like your outfit sucks and Ishida enters like sassy bitch mode and is like you're one to talk bimbo <laughs> it's like they're dressed identically I don't know <laughs> where this is coming from <laughs> He then says, like, well, even if she's strong, she's a tiny little woman who doesn't weigh very much. So there's a limit to how well she can block his attacks. Which, what? <laughs> I guess he's thinking, like, I guess that makes, I guess, like, if you're tiny and try to block a lot of force, you would get lifted off the ground. But this is a fucking shonen anime, my man. That ain't how this shit works. No. Hits a guy is right over there. You don't say that in his face. <laughs> Uh, anyway, he nearly gets her, and he says she's best at direct attack, so he'll attack from weird angles. I, yeah, I think it's hilarious. He's like, she can only attack in straight lines. It's like, yeah, it's what? like, bro, were you taking lessons from Ichigo? <laughs> yeah, this, he's really in Ichigo mode for this fight. He really is, you know, including the next part where he's just like, I didn't notice the enemy had a plan. Oh, no, I set up their <laughs> trap and then fell in it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he shows that he can make arrows that do hard angles and shoots her a bunch as she dodges and blocks some. And then she reveals that her yo-yo can, of course, curve. <laughs> she was tricked him into helping her destroy the pillar so he wouldn't have any cover. And he's stuck running from the yo-yo as it chases after him. And he tries to block it with, like, the weird shield bow he has. But it just goes through and cuts him. Uh, and something with a yellow eye is watching from the doorway. Rukia is running upstairs. She can sense the fight's happening, but isn't sure. She ends up on a walkway outside, and it looks like a weird city with fake blue skies. Sele Buckethead is behind her. <laughs> yes. And then vanishes when she turns around. It uses a squeaky voice, and then a deep one is like, I hate the sun, follow me. And she does. <laughs> it was genuinely unsettling. <laughs> Come into this dark room with me. Okay. And she's like, yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that seems like a good plan. He says he can't stand sunlight, so thanks for following him. And then he removes the mask and says they're a uh, Eroniero. And they look like Kai and Shiba, the guy she killed, her friend that she killed, her the former uh, Ukitake's lieutenant who got turned into a hollow and she killed in the flashback. Yeah, Aranero Aru Aru Eri. Don't oh. even try. <laughs> Espada number nine. Man, really unlikely to run into an actual Espada with Rukia. Uh, so they revealed it. It's like, are you Kayan? And I'm like, huh, who's that? <laughs> Bob's like the guy. You remember the flashback Soul Society? And I'm like, oh my god, that was so Chinkaria ago. <laughs> yeah, it was a fucking while ago. <laughs> you remember when Ukatate was unreasonable? <laughs> yeah, it's from the one episode. <laughs> Just completely. He didn't take his medication that day. <laughs> he's, he, he was he's, he was quick to anger. <laughs> Illustrated Guide to Soul Reapers, Still not my golden. golden. Mm. Continuation of the last one. Kyoraku's squad all got drunk, so they're hungover and didn't show up to guard duty. <laughs> Ukitake collapses and gets carried off, and that also means his squad can't help, I guess. It's a guy is like, damn, guess I have to do it by myself. 
I, I really want the version of this movie where Kyoraku and Ugi Taka took Taki in there and just fucking eviscerate that dude instantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have yeah. been, been incredible. You get to see hits a guy in the corner and be like, oh, hit, as he falls in half. <laughs> did, did you know that guy? Mm -mm. No. Nope. <laughs> We get episode 154. This is a fucking weird recap because it's interspersed with actual yes. new things. I documented it. There are 26 seconds of intro recap that's from a while ago that then goes into the Afro fight with Chad that then gets three minutes of redundant Arururu content. Fucking insane. Yeah, this is yeah. weird. Chad's fighting the disco guy. He gets blasted away and gets punched in the stomach and smacked around a little bit. He tells... Chad, he wasn't even a warm up, and then Chad shoots some punch beams at him, and we cut back away to Rookie going into the room with Sheba. Uh, Rookie is coping because Sheba's supposed to be dead. Yeah, he acts like Sheba, which is a lot like Ichigo, which I explain. Guess explain some of the weird ass imprinting Rookie did on him. Yeah, this is some Ichigo <laughs> Zack situation for sure. Yeah, it's intense how much these flashbacks are all directly Ichigo things. And and they're playing the Final Fantasy IV love theme they stole over this moment. And I'm like, <laughs> how much can you steal from one franchise in one scene simultaneously? <laughs> and then Rukia flashes back to Shiba and how warm and tender he was. And they're suddenly in a fucking dojo and he throws her a wooden sword and says they have to train. And she gets sucked into this fucking illusion and I'm just like waiting for the shoe to drop and we get some more flashbacks that we've already seen before and she gets owned in the training battle. Rukia has bought into this shit hard and he pulls out some cushions from one of the weird pillars and tells her to sit so they can catch up. When the hollow died, it respawned in Hueco Mundo, but respawned as Sheba. And he's like, my willpower overpowered the willpower of the hollow. Ha ha ha. And he like laughs and pats himself on the back. He says he's been waiting for a chance to get revenge the whole time. And he says the blue sky outside is a surveillance mechanism for Aizen. So he got brought here so Aizen couldn't see. He has a plan and he needs Rukia's help. Uh, and he smirks and then takes a swipe at her with his sword and she avoids it. But her cheek got cut. Gein is in the surveillance room. Still, we cut to Gein in the surveillance room. Ulkiora shows up and asks if anybody has gotten to an Espada yet. And then Gein gets really needy and tries to convince Ulkiora to be his friend. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I, I liked Loopy so much before Grim Jow eradicated him. <laughs> Lukiora ignores him and asks uh, if he can change the direction or people are going from this console. And then Gein's like, I'd never do that. I just like happy endings, which is why Ruki ran into this dude. Gein's really obviously like, oh, you go here. Yeah. Hilarious. We cut back to Rukia. She looks traumatized and she was like, wow, it's great that you got so much stronger. You didn't die instantly. And then he gaslights her really hard and is like, well, of course I'd try to kill you, Rukia. You killed me. And then he gets really dark and like starts needling her fucking trauma. He's like, so are you ready to let me kill you? And then Rukia's like, sure, but not until I save Orihime. My life isn't mine to give up until then. And then he like ramps this shit up, the psycho up to 11. And is like, wow, I'm just joking. Of course you have to die, but not for no reason. Come on. I need you to do the thing for me, which is kill, kill all your friends. <laughs> kill, kill them all Rukia that's the job I have for you if you do that I'll forgive you for killing me <laughs> surely that will erase the sin of killing your friends wait yeah, yeah this, this is very smart this finally convinced Rukia that this dude is a fake Rukia is fucking pissed and uses her sheik eye and like clashes swords with him she tries to freeze him but he dodges they do a couple more back and forth and he's still keeping up this act and shit talking her she gets mad enough to blast him away and shoot a big ice beam at him, but he dodges it and he just starts fucking laughing. Illustrated Guide to Soul Reapers, not, not golden. golden. Still not golden. Mm. Uh, Izuru and Shuhei are interim captains now. Rinji's like, good for you. Uh, and, and, and Shuhei and Izuru claim he's jealous and repeatedly call each other interim captain like, hey, interim captain Izuru, we have to go do some work. Oh, you're right, interim captain Shuhei, let's go. And they like walk off, like patting each other on the back. And Rinji's like, all that means is they have more work now, fucking dumbasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a really good line when he's gaslighting her earlier, when he's like, what? Is there something strange about a scenario where I'm trying to kill you? <laughs> <laughs> and that, that made me laugh so hard. I'm like, what a sentence, <laughs> right? <laughs> I cannot wait to see how this pans out. Because once again, I'm flying blind now. I'm working without a net. I have not read past this. So I don't know if uh, 
he might have been telling the truth. He might actually be her old lieutenant. Yeah. And I, he's just crazy now. I, <laughs> <laughs> I actually can't remember either because I, I was I couldn't remember anything about Buckethead. Turns out mixing your blood with hollow makes you go a little loopy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that means half of us are now flying blind. Crazy. That's exciting. And those are our episodes. Great. That means we get to do our fun segments. Ooh. We have those? Yeah, we do, actually. Oh. Uh, well, we're going to start with my favorite segment, Best Dressed Award. We get to choose who was best dressed in these five episodes. Um, Dr. Agro, who do you think had the best outfit? I'm going to have to ask for your indulgence because I can't remember his name, just his face as it haunts my nightmares. Okay. The, the guy Ichigo called Panini with the wind powers. Tordoni. Tordoni, yes. Him. I love his outfit. He's got the fringe. He's got like the open buttonholes with the red sash on the black and white. It's just, mm, it's perfection. It's killer design. All right, Dan. Uh, this has probably come up in Bleach before, Chugging Bleach specifically, mm-hmm. but I'm going with it. Uh, Gein, who is wearing a winning smile and trying to make his first friend ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going well for him. It was really good in that scene where he's like, I didn't realize you were talking to me because he basically had the same reaction that y- Yusuke Urameshi's mom had of like, that's bullshit. My son has no friends. But for himself, <laughs> he's like, you can't be talking to me. No one talks to me. <laughs> they all take one look and realize <laughs> they, they know better. Everyone sees me. They do a 360 and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I'll go. Uh, I'm going to choose the girl on our car we don't have Fuck. a name for yet. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> now I don't think that's her name. <laughs> her design's pretty good. Yeah, I like her weird big dress. <laughs> I, I'm a little sad that we're not going to get any more character there. She, she does have like uh, part of a set of Sailor Moon season villains energy. Yes, she does. Like, in a really weird way. Like, something about her headpiece also makes me think that. She's going to have a thick filter on her voice and be like, Damn, we were going to ruin the local bakery. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) Is Ichigo going to tell us what lesson we learned today? (laughs) The lesson is, don't be like Uryu. And don't be like Uryu being me. (laughs) That's the lesson. All right, Chris, now that there's nothing left, (laughs) cast him into the desert. I'm going to pick Nell for her tusks. Uh, That's true. Because they they start getting actual uh, play this time. She has an (laughs) even more winning smile than Ichigo. God, now I'm remembering that scene we didn't really cover where she grabs her uvula. Oh! (laughs) She's a vomit. Oh, Oh, that was awful. (laughs) No, it's saliva. (laughs) Until it isn't. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, well, I guess we should move on from that. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Dan, mm. how excited are you to continue watching Bleach? Oh, I'm pretty excited. This is this is this is good stuff. Scale I, of the one ten, though. I'm gonna have to say a nine. You know, maybe I'll learn anything about this stacked art car that he was fighting <laughs> that might be a mom or have mom related powers. I don't think anything up to the bow dark is going to have mom-related powers. There might be See, moms, but Bob, come I on. will go find an anime, and it will have moms. Anything like, in Bleach. Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm really excited to find out if Cayenne is uh, actually Cayenne. I'm, uh, or Shiba, whichever. I need to know if they're clear on that. Because there's a chance this battle ends and we're not clear. Oh my um, god! If they leave that up in the air, that's gonna suck. That would ruin her. Then she would be she would be damaged goods at that point mentally. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would that would be too much. Uh, there's lots of cool stuff going on, and I get to watch. I get to watch Gein eat popcorn and watch it on the security <laughs> cameras. <laughs> Also, who knows? Maybe next time uh, Orihime is going to delete the bound arc. <laughs> Maybe! <laughs> she can do anything with the Hokyoku. Even delete the Hokyoku. Wait a second. Yeah, sure, that checks out. Yeah, this is a... Chris, did you bring any crazy trivia? 
Uh, yes, the Primaran Espada exist because uh, Kubo didn't like the designs he had and made new ones. This is why they were originally all going to have animal motifs, which is why there's a Grim Jow, and then the dude who's a bull, Dordoni who's a bull, and then this new girl's a butterfly. Because he made, and Loopy was the octopus. But he made this new one, so now they don't all have animal motifs. <laughs> uh, is that true or some bullshit I made up, Dan? True. Bob. It feels true, but it also feels like a fan theory, so I'm going to say false. Aggro. I think if you mix in some editorial fuckery, that sounds true. Uh, I didn't even base it on a fan theory. I just fucking made that shit up. God damn uh. it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> the streak is over. <laughs> well, that's all our bits, so that means it is time to rate these episodes. We, of course, use our patented tightness scale that goes from zero to 25 Chris, how tight were these episodes? Uh, these had some good bits. They weren't great, but they weren't bad at either. I, like, I wasn't at any point being like, fucking end, and, 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 so I'm going to give them 16. All right, I'll go ahead and go. I actually like the stuff that happened in this set of episodes a lot, but it's really poorly doled out. Like, we have a bunch of cuts to fights for five seconds, in a bunch of the Ichigo fights horribly animated, which we didn't really cover, but it looks terrible a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to give it a 17. I really enjoy D- Dordoni, though. <laughs> I didn't write his name down once in my notes because I didn't turn on the subtitles to see how it was written. I'm like Tortellini. That's what Ichigo called him, and I can't understand what he said. But he says it so many times. He, he does, says, but I'm, I'm like, the good, I'm the magnificent Dordoni. Yeah, see, I don't know. I can. <laughs> I kept hearing it is Totoni. Right, <laughs> like Totoni's pizza rolls over here. <laughs> <Yes>. I, was... <laughs> I was like, I don't want to call him that. Let's turn on these subs. I think we had one for the final episode where he was in it. Uh, yeah, I had to turn it on for, oh, God, got to look at my notes again because I'm not going to be able to say that without. Uh, Z- oh. <laughs> that, name, that name is a nightmare. Yeah. Z- Zayla Poro. There we go. I had to turn it on for that. Surprised no one nominated him for best dress. I guess we're saving him. <laughs> Gotta save those nuts for winter. Uh, Dr. Agro, what did you think of these episodes? Oh, I am I am so sorry about this. There's so little filler in this set. There's really great Nell stuff. It's These episodes were pretty great. But I have a personal vendetta. <laughs> born of decades old trauma. This was the moment. The hype died this one's for you diamond dust rebellion this is getting my zero <laughs> oh. I, aggro i am almost 99 percent sure that i also stopped reading bleach weekly because of dordoni mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the moment you realize oh god this is gonna be four times as long as it needs to be and then all I heard after that was Eisen fight for chapters and chapters and chapters. I came back for that, but I don't remember. Like I don't remember what exactly about it. I was just like, "Oh, we're not mo- we're not getting to any of the shit I want anytime soon, are we?" And then I stopped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you see, guys, I was only watching the anime at this point, so I was like at a, a oasis after the bounce arc. Yeah, this is where it like <laughs> picks up and starts moving. Like I'm holding th- this volume of the manga currently and I was stunned. It starts with Chad and Uryu wasting those two jobbers when they get there mm-hmm. and makes it all the way to the Dordone fight. Huh. That makes sense because they didn't have that filler arc in the middle. Yeah, it's brisk. All right, Dan. What do you think? How tight was it? Uh, weirdly enough, you ended up at the exact number uh, I'm sitting at, 17. Uh, reason being, I really enjoy a lot of what's in this. I think some of the fights are really, really cool. Um, I think the comedy is very, very funny. I think we have some great designs and great characters, but it really is truly brought down by looking like shit a lot of the time during these cool moments and a little bit too much padding in a number of areas and some bad editing where it's like, we got to see, I don't know, a grand total of seven seconds of the fight Chad's having in one episode. And then the next episode, they cut to 20 more seconds of it. Yeah, it shouldn't have been there. It's insane. I don't know how you do this. 
And really, it's because of that that it's as low as it is at 17. I, I genuinely think a lot of what's here on paper is good. And as I'm sitting here noticing that it looks really bad in this fight, you know, between Dordone and um, Ichigo, you, I was like, man, this animation's wa- rough. What is with this? And you're like, it's almost like they're making a movie right now. Yeah, it's almost like they really shouldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe do that during the bout arc. Maybe not during, <laughs> you know, the shit people have been waiting forever to see. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully that won't have any impact on Aizen fights, right? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. God, I hope not. That would be crazy. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. <laughs> now I have to end the episode, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you... Hey, we can do this like like a married couple. I can make an excuse like I'm... You, you, like you're on the phone with the podcast, right? Okay. I'm just like, Bob? Yeah, Bob, I need your help with this thing. Oh, yeah? End the podcast? <laughs> yeah, I can end the podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I have to leave, though, and that means you too as well. Bye. Yeah, I killed the dog. What? <laughs> hey, before you down that jug of bleach, how about you head on over to patreon.com slash gbpodcast. You can get the next episode of Chugging Bleach early and help support us doing insane seven-year-long endeavors like watching all of Bleach. We also do many other shows that you can get extras for, and if you ascend to Vasto Pod Lourdes, you'll even get credit for it on Big Think Dimension, our weekly gaming podcast. If not, that's fine. We'll see you next time you're thirsty for some bleach. The executive producers for this Gig Boots video are Esme, Ely Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, A Reminder for Symphony of War, Cooper Tank, Very Best Plot, Iconic Bane, and Rado. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these guys. If you want to become an executive producer or normal patron, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.